Uh, okay, main topic today is legal software and sites. Uh, my bio, I don't know if you guys know my bio, but I got to go over it. The son of John here at Condolat. Worked at uh, 40 years at 3M in the information technology IT. Uh, officer presenter at the 3M Personal Computing Club for almost 40 years now. I do have free computer help. Uh, you also have your uh, people here that you can sign up for slots. But if you have an email or a phone question, I'm thrifty, not cheap. So I do look for uh, if there's a cheaper way to do things. And fortunately, in the uh, computers and software and Internet, there's lots of alternatives. Okay. Uh, in April, we've got a new one coming up on online security and passwords. That'll be April 20th from 2 to 3. Uh, we'll talk about uh, why you need a password manager and some tips to keep you safe on your devices. We just had a fix-it clinic this month, and we'll probably have the next one either in May or, or so, let's see, March, April, every two, three months. So we'll have one coming up if you do have any broken items. I mentioned the Crondelot website. Uh, we've added uh, entries out there. There's an entry called Tech Help, and in that Tech Help, uh, you'll see a calendar. Uh, it has our fix-its, uh, presentations, and a list of the one-on-one -on -one help. Resources, uh, we've got uh, the past meeting recordings and handouts, so if you missed one or want to revisit one uh, or uh, want to see a handout maybe for one that was already done, you can go out there. There's a frequently asked question area. And then if you do want to ask a question, it'll send, uh, send me an email to contact me. Okay, let's get to our main topic, which is Legal Software and Sites uh, by Tom P.C. Kreitzer. End of life or estate planning is the most important way to protect you, your children, your loved ones, your health care, and your finances. Less than 4 in 10 people have an end of life plan, and of the 4 who do, most are incomplete or out of date. Out of date. We don't plan to fail, we just fail to plan. So there's a lot of uh, things that go into these different decisions and uh, hopefully the tools and techniques and sites that we talk about will make it easier for you to do that. You can uh, pay an attorney, you can use software, you can use online services, you can even fill out paper forms. And we'll talk about all these options, and uh, you can use a combination of, of uh, whatever fits your particular situation best. The software and sites are easy to use where they ask questions, and then they generated complete forms that are state-specific. So if you've ever used, like, some of the tax programs and that where they ask you questions and fill out forms, it's the same type of deal here where uh, it'll ask you various questions. Uh, I mentioned I was thrifty. Uh, there are low cost options to free options that you can use instead of paying $300 to $2,000 for an attorney. So for most people, you can get, a, uh, get away without having to pay high attorney fees. Okay, the number one document that uh, everyone needs is a will. A will spells out how you want to dispose of your assets after you die and appoints an executor to carry out your instructions. If you have minor children, your will will also be used to name a guardian to care for them. If you die without a will, state laws choose your beneficiaries and decide who gets what. You don't want to be like the magician Prince, whose family has been arguing for the last eight years. Prince died in 2014, and they're still arguing over uh, uh, the relatives and uh, all who gets what and, and things like that. So you don't want to be without a will. 
The cost of software or sites can range from nothing at all, so it could be free to do it, all the way up to about $300. And we'll talk about those options in a little bit. Uh, for $5 to $20, you can buy a standard will and testament on ready-made forms, and uh, you can pick up those at places like Office Max or Office Depot. They sell these forms, you fill them out, you write them, and they're just as legal and valid as a lawyer doing it. And that's what I mentioned here. A will prepared by you is just as legal as if an attorney drew it up and it can save you thousands of dollars. Oh, does dad have his deal? Did she want it up here? You want to hear? <laughs> okay. Uh, the number two thing uh, after a will is consider creating a living revocable trust. A living... In many states, when you pass away, your estate may go through a court process known as probate, which can be costly and time-consuming. Title to the assets, either property or financial accounts, must be changed so that they are owned by the trust. So if you do want to set up uh, this living revocable trust for things like a house or a car or or uh, certain assets that you have to have those passed down to uh, particular people there. You can set up these trusts, but you do have to title the assets so that they are owned by the trust. While you remain alive, you retain complete control of the trust and any interest or dividends or things like that that uh, uh, may get generated, uh, that goes to you who, who started the trust there. Uh, so the trust only gets enforced when you die, then whatever, however you've chosen that to be disposed of, that's what uh, will take place. With a living revocable trust, you still need a will, specifically what's called a pour over will. In this document, you name a guardian for your children and ensure assets that weren't that were not retitled before you passed away, make their way into the trust. Although they may have to go through probate to go from the will to the uh, trust. Okay, the third most important thing to do uh, uh, after the will and possibly the revocable trust is update your beneficiaries. It's imperative that you review the beneficiaries for your retirement plans. So if you have an IRA, a 401k, a Roth, if you have brokerage or bank accounts or any insurance policies, you want to go through there and identify a beneficiary. Beneficiaries are paid directly immediately to the person or people without probate of the will. You can often change these online. So with uh, the increase in websites and accounts to uh, access, you can frequently do this uh, uh, by logging into the website and, uh, and making changes, which is nice because you want to make sure these are up to date. If somebody moves or dies or you want to change what you have allocated, you want to be able to change it uh, uh, and review it possibly once a year or more. Uh, re review yearly with changes, and this could be due to uh, uh, you either have new accounts uh, that you forgot to add beneficiaries to, uh, somebody has died, uh, maybe you did, were, had them listed as a beneficiary and now they're dead, uh, maybe there's births, there's more children or grandchildren, uh, minors, uh, maybe the minors are now of legal age, so you're changing things. And there's a few other factors, so you do uh, want to review this uh, often to make sure it's up to date. Okay, the next thing is set up a durable power of attorney, a DPOA, or some people call it a POA. 
If you become incapacitated and can no longer handle your finances, having a DPOA in place will allow somebody you designated, usually a trusted family member or a friend, to manage your affairs on your behalf. There is no universally accepted format for a DPOA. So even though these uh, software and sites will let you create a DPOA, some financial institutions require that you submit their specific form. And their form uh, uh, may uh, uh, have other, other things, that, uh, other pieces of information that they're collecting. Okay, another important uh, document to have is what's called an advanced directive, uh, also known as a living will. This details the type of medical procedures that you do or do not want done to you in the event that you have a medical problem, as well as your wishes for end-of-life care. Uh, are you going to be put on a ventilator? Uh, uh, are you going to be tube-fed? Uh, uh, things like that. You can uh, specify all kinds of different uh, things that you want done or not done. This document will ensure that your choices are followed in the event that you cannot advocate for yourself. So if you become incapacitated, you need this document specifying what you want done or not done to you. If you haven't given much thought to what type of medical care you would prefer, there's a ton of information available. Uh, I list here the American Bar Association's Toolkit for Healthcare Planning. Uh, that has a useful guide. We can just take a quick look at that. So this is a site uh, that has this document out here, and uh, we won't go through it all, but it's a toolkit to... Uh, uh, go through and, and uh, you fill it out and uh, it'll contain your wishes for what you want done and what you don't want done. You don't need an attorney to draw up an advance directive. Uh, the form is legally valid if it's signed in front of a witness. These directives differ by state. You can find the appropriate documents for your state at Caring Info. So this, again, is another site out here that uh, uh, you can go to and uh, let's get rid of that. You uh, pick your state, and it will, uh, it will give you a sample document there that you uh, use to fill out to uh, express your wishes. Let your family members and your doctor know about your advanced directive and keep it accessible in the event of an emergency. And we'll talk about ways to make it accessible for everybody a little bit later. So that uh, living will or health care directive, uh, you fill out uh, what you want done and don't want done. Uh, kind of connected to this is what's called a health care proxy. And this healthcare proxy is a durable power of attorney for your healthcare wishes. So we talked about earlier the DPOA was for your financial, who you wanted to take over, and uh, and uh, if you were unable to do it, who was going to have control over your finances. This is for your healthcare. Uh, you appoint somebody you trust to act as your agent in conveying your healthcare wishes which ideally you've documented in your advanced directive. So this makes it easier. If you've done that advanced directive living will, the person who's going to be your health care proxy now knows exactly what you want done and what you don't want done. You can find out uh, more about these responsibilities at the Conversation Project, which offers insight into choosing and becoming a health care proxy. So we talked about creating a bunch of these documents, and uh, with anything, uh, the more information you have, and as you collect this stuff, you need a way to organize it. 
What you should do is you should prepare a user manual and share it with your executor right away. Let them know, uh, we'll talk about this. Make sure it's in a secure spot. Don't tell family members you don't completely trust. Uh, so if there's particular family members that you're leaving out of a will or uh, things like that, you don't necessarily want to tell them where the will is uh, because if they find the will and see that they're not listed there, they may destroy the will. Uh, so uh, only, uh, only let people that you completely trust know where it's located and uh, what's on there. Uh, within this uh, information and organization there, you want to provide a list of all your assets. That includes bank accounts, credit cards, stock accounts, PayPal, life insurance, photos, where your photos, videos, subscriptions you may have, reward programs, like if you have frequent flyer miles, uh, things like that, bills, social media. So if you do have accounts, uh, uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram or or any, uh, any accounts out there, you want to uh, have this information available. That includes email, uh, who your attorney may be if you have one, a financial advisor, and where to find original copies of your will, your trust, or any deed document. So if you have a house or a, a car or that, and you have titles or deeds, you want to make it very easy for the uh, executor or the people uh, that will be administering your estate. This includes a list of your usernames, passwords, and access codes to your online accounts. You don't want to put this information in the will because everything that you put in the will is public information when it's filed. So you don't want to list uh, assets or accounts or passwords, anything in the will there. For passwords and accounts, I use a package called Bitwarden, which is a password manager, and it allows you the capability of, uh, of uh, having one, one password to get into Bitwarden, and then it can maintain all your other accounts and passwords. And I'll be giving a presentation next month in April on uh, Bitwarden and password managers. But the average person has almost a hundred accounts. Most people think they only have a handful of accounts, but when you start adding up accounts that you may have for rewards programs, uh, uh, airline uh, logins, all these different things, the average person has just short of a hundred accounts to keep track of. And that's a lot of accounts with a lot of passwords to, uh, to have on post-it notes or written down or or just plain lost is what happens over time. Uh, don't be the guy who died and uh, locked his cryptocurrency exchange customers out of $250 million because after he died, only he knew the password and nobody else did and nobody could get into his account. If you have two-factor authentication set up for important accounts, and that's where if you get a text message or a code to log into your bank or financial, uh, you want to make sure that your loved ones will be able to, uh, to access that uh, if something happens to you and you're unable to, uh, you either died or uh, have a medical uh, uh, problem where you can't, uh, can't get in there. So you, your loved ones, you want to make sure that if you do have this two-factor authentication, that your loved ones are going to have access to your phone. Uh, one of the options is to add a trusted uh, person's fingerprint or face to the phone or your PIN number or some way that they're going to be able to get into your phone in the event that, uh, that there's a problem. Be sure to review and update all this information every year or two. So after you've organized it, that's real good, but information uh, needs to be looked at and updated over time. Original documents should be kept in a bank safety deposit box or a home fireproof safe or with a lawyer if you have one. 
copies, scans, and backups of these documents should be done uh, using a site. And the site that I recommend and we'll be talking about next, it's called CAKE, CAKE End of Life Planning. So let's talk about CAKE. It's a website out there, and it lets you plan for everything uh, that is eventually going to happen there. The site is www.joincake.com. Let's see if we can quickly go out here. So this is what the site itself looks like. Uh, we'll go into a little more detail here. I'll show a couple of videos here I think I've got. Cake is a free site. Uh, they don't charge. Uh, there's no uh, uh, higher end tier or uh, uh, anything that you can uh, pay for there. Uh, although Cake does make its money by recommending other products and services. So it does link to some other information, but it also gives you the other options, many of which are free or no cost. Okay, let's take a look at what Cake is. Uh, we'll see for the, if you're on the TV, I'm not sure how well the sound will be picked up, but we'll, uh, we'll see there. We'll start out watching this video, which is a minute and 40 seconds. for the ones we love, to live more fully in the present. But that's hard when we worry about things that seem outside of our control. Things like, what will happen at the end of our lives? And will our loved ones be okay after we're gone? But what if thinking about the end wasn't as hard or as scary? That's why we made cake to make it easier to get your final affairs in order, to have more peace of mind now. Use cake for yourself or with someone who needs help planning. A personalized checklist helps you plan for healthcare, legal, and funeral decisions, and other things not covered by traditional estate planning. Cake helps you make decisions by posing simple, thought-provoking questions. Your answers create documents that express your final wishes. It's easy to print them or update them if life changes, which it does. Already have documents? Upload them from your computer or phone. Everything you do is secured with bank-level encryption. Make sure people know where to find your plan. Share access with anyone who has an email address. Get ready to share what really matters to you and make things easier on your family someday. Sign up to create a free cake plan. Live life fully. Okay, let's look at another video uh, that kind of recaps uh, some of what cake is about there. I spent years working in healthcare and saw that we spent an enormous amount of time, resources, and energy on extending life, which is great, especially when you take quality into account. But then, once somebody dies, the loved ones and family members are abandoned. They have no support. We feel like there should be more guidance for everyday people on navigating what is an absolutely universal human experience. Here at Cape, that's what we've set out to do, and we're now the world's largest platform for navigating end of life and mortality. When I lost my grandfather a few months ago, I immediately went to Cape. Everything was outlined clearly and easily, making it possible to honor my grandfather's wishes. I wasn't alone. We chose the name Cape because it's a symbol of celebrating life moments. And that's really what we're about. We want to have people honor life, both their own lives and the lives of those they love. And we want to help people find meaning in the entire cycle of life. Uh, 
Yeah, the person uh, speaking in there is the CEO of Cake. Uh, she's a Harvard graduate, and uh, she wanted to create something that would benefit the world. And as she said, it's the number one website in the world for planning. Uh, so they have a ton of research uh, or a ton of resources that they've uh, uh, put together, thousands of documents and, and links to everything to, to help people uh, navigate through and ask the right questions, document it, and then share it with the people that it needs to be shared with. Let's take a look at one more uh, video here, a minute and 30 seconds here. Hi, my name is Lynn Chan. I'm CEO and co-founder of Cape. We provide a leading solution for navigating mortality and doing end of life planning. And today I'm going to walk you through our platform. You can see that we provide thousands of original articles on every aspect of end of life. You can navigate by what topic or situation you might be in. You can look at popular articles, explore by topic. And you can also use our interactive planning tools to um, let you know what that looks like. You can create a free account. I'll show you another one account today. And we've organized the key profile into five key categories funeral, legacy, health, digital, and legal and financial. And you can expand any of these categories to see the prompts that we suggested for you. You can make selections, you can do pre-form entry, and you can save it. And this is now saved securely in your key profile in the cloud where you can access it and update it from anywhere at any time. You can also upload documents that you may already have in your hard drive or scan them in. It's very easy to do. At any point, you can download your profile as a PDF or look at what your profile looks like to someone that you share with. So you can share and grant access to your profiles to anyone that you think should know your end of life practices and have access to your documents. So I encourage you to check it out and let us know what you think. Okay, so that was a quick overview of uh, what some of the stuff is. We'll touch on some of the points again here. It's a comprehensive planning covering your health care, your legal and financial, your legacy, your funeral decisions, all with one tool. So as she mentioned, uh, there's, there's all these uh, uh, documents that can be created, information that can be stored out there. It takes you step by step through doing it. You don't have to do it all at once. You can do this over... Uh, you can choose to use a small part of the, the site, or you can use all of the capabilities that are out there, and you can do it all in one day, or you could uh, stretch it out over any number of years. You choose what you fill out, what you document, and then as you're documenting it, it's going to make suggestions on other things that you may want to consider. It's going to let you identify other contacts. So, uh, if you have an executor, if you have somebody who's your healthcare proxy, things like that, they're going to have access to those documents and that information. And as you change it, they'll get notified that there's been changes and things like that. So this is where keeping your information accessible to other people, keeping it updated, and... Uh, uh, everyone knowing where everything is, this is this is the tool that'll do it. Uh, it creates personalized planning checklists to guide you through on how to begin and what to do next. Okay, so if you haven't done anything yet, you can start out with it. If you already have a will and some of this other stuff, you can uh, use this, you can upload your stuff, you can store it and organize it. It'll help you do your document creation for your advanced care plans, funeral plans, and all kinds of planning documents just to make it uh, easier on everybody. Document storage for the plans uh, on Cake and the files that you upload. So you're storing this all in the cloud, accessible. They have an app, uh, and then you also can go into your browser and, and access it also. It's easy to edit documents so that you can keep all the plans up to date. And as I mentioned, when you make a change to a plan, uh, 
your let's say you're you're changing your will or things like that your executor is going to get notified that a change has been made and uh, things like that profile sharing with loved ones who can access access your documents and information uh, you can manage key contacts so your people know how to contact each other in an emergency so when something does happen uh, just to uh, easily uh, communicate with each other. Who's handling this? Who's doing that? Uh, this makes it easy to do there. You assign roles so everybody knows who's responsible for carrying out your wishes. So that was cake and uh, I highly recommend it and uh, take a look and certainly the price is right uh, uh, with it being free. Now let's talk about some tips. Uh, these are some tips if you're uh, creating a will. Personally, I use a package called Nolo Quicken Will Maker. Uh, I'm using an old version. It's uh, 12 years old, but it still works fine. 2010 uh, to create wills and other documents. Uh, I also use Cake, so I upload the will that I have and that up to Cake there. And Let's take a look at this uh, for Willmaker, just a quick overview of Willmaker here. Protect your legacy and save hundreds on legal fees with America's number one estate planning software. Quicken Willmaker Trust 2022 from NOLO makes it easy to create customized estate plans for your entire family. This powerful software gives you the practical and legal information you need to make wills, living trusts, financial powers of attorney, healthcare directives, transfer on death deeds, and other essential documents. You can also create executor's documents, documents for your home and family, and documents that can help you with your personal finances. Complete forms at your own pace, and a peace of mind that a team of lawyers has made sure that all laws are met for each document. And new for 2022, when you purchase Willmaker All Access, you get a subscription to Everplans. Everplans gives you a single, secure place to store digital copies of your estate plan, to collect important details about your life, and then when the time comes, share those details with the people you trust. Learn more about Willmaker All Access at willmaker.com. Make a plan that protects you and your family with Quick and Willmaker and trust 2022 from no love today. Okay, I, uh, Nolo did mention that if you buy the current version, you get access to the Easy Plan uh, website. Uh, I personally don't recommend that uh, because you have access to Cake, which is which we just talked about, which is entirely free and actually has more more capabilities and is used by uh, millions of more people than uh, ever planned. Some other will tips, uh, if you do have uh, people in uh, your family that you don't want to leave anything to, you want to make sure and mention them in the will. Uh, so if you have a disinherited uh, heir, mention them by name and expressly state that you are not leaving uh, this person a portion of your estate. And so uh, if you're using one of these packages, it'll step you through that and you'll end up with statements like, I acknowledge that John Smith is one of my children for whom I make no provision, which means that they are not going to get anything in the will. So sometimes people think, well, I'm just going to mention the uh, the children are that that I want to donate stuff to or, or leave stuff to, uh, but you also want to make sure that you list the people that you don't want anything left to. You don't want to include end of life or funeral preferences in a will. Put them in a living will. And also because that uh, will is going to be public record filed in the county that you uh, did, you don't want that type of information listed in there. So the will is usually a pretty straightforward, uh, simple document there. If you do have conditional inheritance, uh, they can be more trouble than they're worth. 
Uh, it may be worth paying an attorney to help you with complications and contingencies to get what you want, but probably 90 plus percent of the people or 99 percent of the people uh, don't have conditional inheritance or, or uh, uh, want to say, well, this child will get this if they haven't been married by the time they're 50 years old or things like that. Some people will try and put contingencies there. And like I say, they can be a, a mess there. If you do have a pet and you want to make sure that it's taken care of, you can leave your pet uh, and some money for its care to somebody who will take good care of it, who has agreed to do so. But the way, the official way to do it is to formalize this arrangement to ensure that there's no misunderstanding or other family members saying, well, uh, I'll take, I'll take uh, 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 my dad's uh, dog and, and that, when really uh, the person never wanted that dog to go to a particular, this particular family member. They wanted it to be taken care of by this other person who may not even be in the family. And uh, these documents will help you create what's called a pet protection agreement or a pet trust uh, to your end of life plan so that everybody knows what's going on. Some more tips, do not leave significant assets directly to minors. Uh, so if they're, on, depending on the state again, if you're under the age of 18 or 21, uh, the court will appoint a guardian to look after the assets and that guardian is going to claim fees for doing that. Uh, and usually you don't want that. You can specify assets left to a minor should be placed in what's called a Uniform Transfer to Minors Act uh, count when you die. The assets would be administered by a custodian of your choice as opposed to uh, uh, the court appointing somebody in a bank charging potentially large fees in that. You should also consider tax planning and tax laws if you do have a large or a complex estate. Uh, read the witnessing rules provided with the do-it-yourself wills or the free wills and follow them precisely. So they will give you the, the correct way of having it witnessed and signed and things like that and make sure you follow it because if you don't follow it and you don't get uh, the proper signatures or uh, initialing of the pages or things like that, uh, the will can be contested and other things could happen there. Check out community education classes. Uh, certainly before COVID, it was a little bit easier. Uh, uh, a lot of the community educations had uh, uh, either short or, or even a couple of sessions, maybe on estate planning and health, health decisions. When changes happen to your marital status, your children or grandchildren are born, deaths, you move to a new state, property value changes, or your executor moves away and dies, or tax laws changes, you want to write a new will or add a codicil to the will to uh, identify those changes. That's why you want to make sure all these documents, not just the will, get updated as things change. What are some other tips? Uh, what you can do uh, if you do have a Facebook account is you can add what's called a Facebook legacy contact. Uh, that person will be able to memorialize your account and keep a pared down version of your profile active after your death. You can also uh, opt for your account to be deactivated after you die. So if you want it to cease uh, being out on the internet, you can set that up and a way to do that, either assigning a person or, or making sure it gets deactivated, is go to manage your account and scroll down to request account. You can do a similar type thing uh, if you have Gmail, uh, Google's uh, email there, and that has an inactive account manager also, which turns over control of your account to a designated person after a set period of inactivity. Uh, this is if you have not shared or left instructions to access your account. So earlier we talked about 
uh, making sure that your executor or somebody has access to your accounts and passwords, uh, then you don't need to set up some of these inactive account managers. You've kind of already taken care of that and they won't have to wait 30 days or 90 days to get access to a, an account there. And check with the various sites uh, that you have or services that you use. Uh, some sites will dictate uh, how your online account can be handled after your death. And uh, I just mentioned we talked about Facebook and Google's uh, has that, but there's a lot of sites that do have this capability. Most people just haven't looked into it. You want to list your digital assets and social media accounts and passwords. We talked about that earlier. If you're using a password manager and making sure that your executor or, or uh, if you're married that your spouse knows where the stuff is and can get access to it. Other tips. Uh, some people will uh, uh, talk about they bought books, they bought music, they bought the movies over the years, well, those are all licensed and they're not sold to you. So uh, if you think that uh, you can just transfer that to somebody else when you die, there really is no transferring of those assets uh, when you die. Do not create hassles for your executor by not listing or providing accounts and passwords to, uh, to uh, these different sites and services that you use. Do not close accounts until you are sure, uh, sure that all bills, access, and taxes have been taken care of. So it's nice to keep those open because uh, you may need them to file taxes or to look up uh, values or, or things like that. Proof to the court. Uh, so you, wanna, you don't want to necessarily go through all at once and start closing things. Review and update your plans on a yearly basis. I, I know this is probably the 10th time that you've seen uh, review and update, but it's important. This isn't a one-time thing of do it and forget it. You do want to review it uh, possibly on a yearly basis and make sure that things are up to date. This is from a review of the best will makers of 2022 uh, software packages or websites. And the best overall, uh, the rated the best, uh, is Nolo's Quicken Willmaker. Uh, so if you do want software, it's similar to TurboTax or that, steps you through. Uh, and uh, there's different levels of the package. It sells for between $119 and $299. There are free options. Uh, this lists a website out here, uh, Do Your Own Will. And certainly uh, for simple wills or things like that, uh, you can give that a try. And this is the this is the full review. Let's just take a quick look there. So this uh, this is a review there that goes through. You can see there's a number of different will makers in different categories that they're recommending. And then what it does is it uh, goes through and tells you some of the pros and cons and uh, so if you are looking at a particular package, uh, you might want to take a look here and uh, see what some of them uh, have to offer there. Okay, that concludes the formal part of it. Are there any questions? And we don't have... Too many people here to ask questions there, so that uh, can be good there. So there's a ton of resources out there to, to help you do things, and once you do start organizing uh, the information or, or uh, uh, trying to do things, I do highly recommend that you go out to Cake there. Uh, let me go out here. Let's let me go. Let me do this. Let's log in again. Yeah. 
So this, uh, this is CAKE, where uh, you do have all these tools to help you in all these different areas on, on what you can do there. And there's tons of research uh, or resources and topics that a person can use and uh, access there. But take a look, and uh, I think you'll find it easy to use, and certainly the price is right and allows you to do a lot of things. So thanks for joining us today. Uh, next month it'll be on security and password management. And we'll see you uh, next, next uh, month, uh, April 20th, I believe that is.